So let me start off, Sadhguru, by asking you that uh, you probably are the biggest multitasker that I have met in my life. You are into sharing wonderful things with people, millions of people, and you find the time to, to play golf, and you ride a motorcycle like a champion. I don't know what all you do. How do you manage your time? That last because thing was not a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what all you do. <laughs> no, that, that is a sense of amazement. <laughs> and there are people who are very busy people, and so we believe we are very busy people. We would like to know as to how you manage your time and what is the kind of advice you would like to give us so that life beyond work is a lot more meaningful, at least a little more meaningful than what we lead, a little closer to the kind of meaningful life that you lead. From what I observe uh, from people, as I travel more and more, meet various kinds of people in business, academics, science and regular people all over the world. What I see is uh, most people in the twenty-four hours that we have per day, they're more preoccupied than busy. That is, their own thoughts and their own emotions are such a big issue that most of their time is spent dealing with that. They may be working, but in their work, a lot of struggles are within themselves. If you are in any kind of sport or any creativity, you would know that uh, a little struggle means your ball will go somewhere else, your ragam thalam will go somewhere else, your painting will go somewhere else, nothing will happen properly. Or in other words, what could happen very simply, unfortunately happens with lots of difficulty. This is mainly because they have been given a phenomenal gadget or a phenomenal machine, which is the human mechanism, <coughs> above all a phenomenal dimension called the mind. They are trying to operate this phenomenal machine or a gadget or a computer if you'd like to call it, without reading the user's manual. Every day struggling with their own stuff and it doesn't get solved before they're twenty or something. Till the last day on their deathbed they're still struggling with the same things, their thoughts and their emotions. If they learn to sort this out very early in their life, I'm sure they can work half the number of hours that they're working and be a lot more productive than the way they are right now. My effort is to bring this possibility to people's lives that you can li live life with ease, not with struggle. One thing is when we say work, it's uh, many young people, wonderful people who are getting recognized for whatever wonderful things they have done, leaving them apart but generally work means always been people have been taught that they must work hard. Nobody told them they must work joyfully. Nobody told them their work should be an expression of their joy or their love. They have to work hard. If you work hard, life will be tedious. How else, how else will it be? You will do something hard only because you don't know how to do it. If you know how to do it, you would do it with ease. So without learning how to do something, if we try to do it, without investing enough time in perception, if life is all expression, then life becomes a big struggle. Most people are not doing anything except earning a living, maybe reproducing and dying one day. Nothing more. <laughs> they may believe they're doing many things, but this is all they're doing. Eating, sleeping, reproducing, dying one day. 
That is such a big fuss. Every other creature is able to do this from an earthworm to an insect to anything and anything. Everybody is doing this, they all earn their own living, they eat, they sleep, they reproduce and they die. With one millionth of our brain, they're able to do it. With this big brain, human beings are struggling, not with the things that they're doing, they're struggling with the brain itself. Their own intelligence has become a serious problem. What is the biggest boon in our life? What is the greatest benefaction in our life, which is our intelligence? This has become a problem because they don't know how to hold it, they don't know how to use it, constantly it works against themselves. When I say it works against you, people may call all kinds of names, may use all kinds of words to describe this. They may call it stress, they may call it tension, they may call it misery, they may call it depression, they may call it anxiety, they may call it madness. Essentially, it's your intelligence turned against you. Your intelligence is not working for you, it's working against you. So my fundamental work is this, that at least your body and your mind should work for you. Nobody else may work for you, it doesn't matter. <laughs> At least your body and in your intelligence must work for you. If this one thing happens, you living blissfully, gracefully, effectively is a natural consequence. <laughs>